Okay, lesson 3.6 is on classifying triangles. Uh, if you look up at our targets, you can see that we're going to be learning to classify triangles by both the angle measure and also the measure of the sides. And then if you peek at the third target, you can see some actual terms that we're going to be using to describe triangles, equilateral, isosceles, scaling, acute, right, and obtuse triangles. Um, and then obviously we are going to apply these definitions to proof and to solve problems, which is the bulk of what we do. So I'm going to give you a minute here, though, or if you want, just go ahead and pause the video for a second. And while you're paused, I want you to look at these four triangles and see if you can use these bolded words, if you can come up with more than one for each one of these triangles. So go ahead and pause now, because I'm going to go ahead and list them out, and then you can log back on and see if you've gotten the right ones. A. The three sides are different lengths, so we call that scalene. And because this angle is larger than 90 degrees, we also call it obtuse. Because these two sides are the same, we call it isosceles. Right? And uh, because all of the angles are smaller than 90, we could also call it acute. C, since the three sides are the same, we can call it equilateral. Since the three angles are the same, we could also call it equiangular. And on the bottom one, we have two sides the same, so I could call it isosceles. And we have a right angle, so obviously I could call it a right triangle. So if you notice, equilateral isosceles and scalene all had to do with the sides. Three sides were the same, two sides were the same, no sides were the same. Equiangular, acute, right, and obtuse all had to do with angle measure. All right, equiangular meaning all are the same, acute meaning all are acute, Right meaning there is one right angle, and obtuse meaning there is one obtuse angle. So let's go ahead and fill these in as definitions on the next sheet. All right, so you should be right here. The first one is an equilateral triangle. We want to write these in if-then form. All right, so each triangle had a word that described the side and a word that described the angle. So these first ones are for the sides. Okay, so an equilateral triangle, we're going to write it both ways. If a triangle is equilateral, then it has all sides congruent. And you can make yourself a picture of that. And you can flip that around. If a triangle has all sides congruent, then it is equilateral. All right, let's do the same for the next two. If a triangle is isosceles, then it has two sides congruent. So something like that. Or we can flip that around and say if a triangle has two sides congruent, then it is isosceles. I'm going to put a star by this one because we use a lot of isosceles triangles this semester, so that's an important one to remember. We're going to do more with that in the next section. A scalene triangle has no sides congruent. So if a triangle is scalene, then none of its sides are congruent. Might look something like that. If a triangle has none of its sides congruent, then it is scalene. Okay, again, isosceles is probably the one we use the most. These three don't have to do with sides. They obviously have to do with angles, 
Okay, an acute triangle, remember acute means the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. And if it's an acute triangle, it has all acute angles. So if a triangle is acute, then all angles in the triangle are acute. So I could draw a triangle like that. Um, or I could say if all the angles in a triangle are acute, then the triangle is acute. And this one almost looks like it's a right angle. That's supposed to be smaller than a right angle. So let's say, let's mark these. We'll say that's 88. Uh, we'll say that's um, 22. And then this one would be 70, something like that. All right, a right triangle can obviously only have one right angle. So we would say if a triangle is right, then it has one right angle. It can't have more than one. If a triangle has one right angle, then it is a right triangle. You could do something like that, showing that's a 90 degree angle. Finally, obtuse is very similar to right triangle because it can only have one. You cannot create a triangle with more than one obtuse angle in it. So if a triangle is obtuse, then it has one obtuse angle, or the flip. If a triangle has one obtuse angle, then it is an obtuse triangle. And a picture might be something like that, where this angle right here is your obtuse angle. All right, let's see how we could use these. Here's an example of a solve type problem. It says the average of the lengths of the sides of triangle ABC is 14. We should be able to write an equation based on that. If you remember what average means, we add them up and divide by however many there are. Well, there are three sides. So if I add up x plus 5 plus 4x minus 6, plus 2x plus 1, and I divide by 3, since there are 3 sides, that average, it's telling me, is 14. So I'm going to go ahead and just solve here. right? I can add like terms. x plus 4x is 5x. 5x and 2x is 7x. 5 minus 6 is negative 1, plus 1 drops out. So divided by 3 is 14. If you remember to get rid of division by 3, we're going to multiply both sides by 3. That leaves me 7x equals, what is that, 30, 42. And then hopefully you know you can divide by 7 there and get x to be 6. Let's see how that helps me. It says, is the triangle scalene isosceles or equilateral? Remember, those words have to do with the sides. So I need to know how long the sides are. So if I take my 6 and I plug in, 6 plus 5 is 11. 6 times 2 is 12, plus 1 is 13. And 6 times 4 is 24. 24 minus 6 is 18. So since all three sides are different, we can say the triangle is scalene. All right, there's example 1. All right, let's look at a proof. All right, we just have a couple more examples here. Uh, we are given, let's mark up the diagram, that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. We are given that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Make sure you're using different markings. And JP is congruent to PO. JP, those top two little segments, that's given. And I'm trying to prove 
that this triangle right here, KPM, is isosceles. So in order to prove that it's isosceles, we know our definition says it has to have two congruent sides. So if I look at triangle KPM, the two congruent sides I'd have to have, I'd have to have PK congruent to PM. So that's what I'm shooting for, just so that I have some idea of what I want. All right, so step two. Well, where can I go? Well, we've been working with congruent triangles. So I would say maybe we need to head there. It's very tempting, I think, in this problem to want to go after JPK, this little triangle, and OPM, this little triangle, because they have the sides we want, right? And we have parts of them. We have these two little segments and we have these angles. But I think you quickly realize that you reach kind of a dead end, that there isn't really any other part we can get. We can get these angles right here congruent by vertical, but in the end that doesn't help because my side is not between the two angles. So I would not be able to use angle side angle. So that's kind of a dead end. So instead I'm going to look at, and let me mark them in different colors here, I'm actually going to look at the overlapping triangles, which we've discussed in a previous section. So that orange one and this green one. All right. So what parts of those do I have so far? I have this angle in the orange congruent to this angle in the green, and I believe that's all I have, but I see angles next to each other, so I think I can add to get angle JKM, that full angle, congruent to angle OMK, and I would say if congruent angles are added to congruent angles, then the sums are congruent. So that gets me this whole angle in the orange congruent to this whole angle in the green. Again, remember I can't use these two little ones because I'd have angle, angle, side, and that is not one of our congruences. All right, so back here to the orange and green, I now have, if you're just looking at the orange, I have this big angle and this little angle. And then in the green, I have the big angle and the little angle, and hopefully you see that they share side KM. So we did a lot of that with overlapping triangles. We have this idea of reflexive. And now you can see that we can get the orange and the green congruent. I'm going to be careful to order the letters. JKM congruent to, that would have to be OMK. And that is angle side angle of the two lower angles and the side between them. Now, how do, are those triangles going to help me get PK and PM? Don't make the mistake of thinking that these two are corresponding parts, right? Side PK, right, that segment is not a full side of the green triangle. So I can't say this by corresponding parts. So the question is, what corresponding part of this orange and this green will help me get PK and PM. Look at these two little segments and hopefully you realize if we pick this whole side OK and this whole side JM, those are corresponding parts, I'd have overlap and I could subtract. So that's the trick. We're going to pick JM in the orange one congruent to OK in the green one. If triangles congruent, then corresponding parts congruent. Again, these are not, PK is not a side, it's a piece of a side. Then once I have these two long segments congruent, I can subtract those congruent segments to get PK congruent to PM by if congruent segments are subtracted from congruent segments, then the differences are congruent. Once I have those two congruent, I can say that triangle KPM is isosceles using my definition. If two sides are congruent, because that's what I'm starting with, then the triangle is isosceles. That matches what I'm saying here. So be sure to get your if then in the right order. All right, one more quick problem. It says if triangle VSY is isosceles, and its perimeter is less than 45, which side of triangle VSY is the base? 
Well, the problem is isosceles tells us two sides are congruent, but I don't know which side, right? So let's say in the first case, if this is V, S, Y, let's say those two sides are congruent. So if those are the matching sides, I would have 10 equal to X plus 7, which means X would equal 3. So then if I try to fill that in, this would be 10. 3 plus 7 would be 10. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 minus 8 is negative 2. Hopefully you realize that, that case doesn't work. So now let's look at another possible case, right? How about we try these two sides congruent instead? That would set the 10 equal to the 2x minus 8, which gives us 18 equals 2x and x equals 9. Let's look at what happens there on the triangle. If I put in 9, this is 10. 9 times 2 is 18 minus 8 is 10. And then here, 9 plus 7 is 16. Right, so in that case, this segment would be the base, and that segment, what, V, Y? We have one more case, though, to consider, right? So I might also have this segment matching this one, which means X plus 7 would equal 2X minus 8. If I solve that, I get X, and I add the 8 over, that would be 15. So if I try that, I would have what? This would be 10. 15 plus 7 here would be 22. And then 15 times 2 is 30 minus 8 is 22, because I know those are the same. So in that case, Vs would be the base. But we have a problem here. All right? I don't think um, that this can be a possible triangle, because remember, um, the perimeter has to be, what did it say? The perimeter is less than 45. And here the perimeter would be 22 plus 22 plus 10. That's 44 plus 10. That's 54. 54 is too big. So because of that, we have to throw that case out. Remember, the perimeter is less than 45. That would be this case, 10, 20, 36. That would hold for perimeter less than 45. So our base would be VY. So again, this case gets thrown out, even though it appears to be valid, because it doesn't have the perimeter to be less than 45. So these were both legitimate cases, except for this piece right here. And that's it for today.